डिक्टेशन स्टार्ट नाउ वी हैव गैदर्ड हेयर टू डिस्कस अ क्वेश्चन विच इज ऑफ क्रिशियल इम्पॉर्टेंस टू आवर फ्यूचर नो सिंगल प्रोग्राम मोर इंटीमेटली अफेक्ट्स सो मैनी मिलियंस ऑफ आवर पीपल देन लैंड रिफॉर्म नो अदर मेजर इज रेमिटेडली comparable in its power to transform their leaves to realize their latent energies and to give them not only economic betterment but hope in their future and their children's future confidence in themselves as human beings and equally important faith in our democratic process the sincerity and the speed with which we implement land reforms will of course materially influence the overall rate of our economic growth however i feel that much more than this is at stake what is on test is nothing less than the justice of our political system and its ability to bring about far reaching social transformation in a human and peaceful manner recent technological developments and the spread of the high yielding varieties program have increased in equalities of income in the countryside and has produced even greater disparity between land donors and tenants it would be a complete misreading of the situation to think that the productive gains of the new technology have rendered land reforms less urgent in my letter to the chief minister to which honorable member referred i mentioned uh, how small cultivators have been left behind most of these problems have already been mentioned but i think i will repeat some of them the position of the unproductive tenants and share ropers has been aggravated by the rise in rents and the large scale resumption of land by owners by the high profits of the new agriculture in the long run the very foundation of agriculture development will be undermined of millions of tenants and share croppers are denied security of tenure in the land they cultivate in spite of legal protection it is well known that cultivators belong to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes have been disposed of their land by money enders and others tenants have been downgraded to the status of share croppers and share croppers reduced to the position of landless laborers all of this has produced a growing current of discontent in the countryside which has occasionally erupted into violence these are dangerous trends certain constitutional amendments which the honorable member has mentioned were carried through to reduce litigation but pro problems are still there i know that all of you are as deeply concerned about these developments as as we are at the center but the conclusion which we must draw from them is that land reforms have become more urgent than ever before and that an active progressive land policy must be a vital part of our socio economic development policy i do not wish to belittle the importance of what has been achieved so far such as the abolition of the intermediators however we must honestly face the fact that the pace of age agrarian reforms has been disappointingly slow and has not fulfilled the expectation of our people 
many of our laws are themselves defective for example the ceiling on land in states are hazard in with so many relaxations and qualifications that they have invited invasions others have so many lacune that they have resulted in prolonged litigation the machinery for their enforcement has been far from adequate the illiteracy and ignorance of most tenants and the dual role of many owners of being both landlords and money lenders has made it difficult for tenants to insist on their rights in the assessment of impartial observers the enforcement machinery itself has tended to be biased in favor of the landlords no program of land reforms can be successful if it does not take these facts into account and devise measures by which they can be overcome what needs to be done is fairly well known the crucial question is how to do it all of you have given and are giving thought to this matter the honorable member has enumerated the points briefly they are that lands records in each state should be complete and up to date in every respect with the proper records of the rights of tenants this i feel should be given the first priority because in its absence no further reform is possible and even the credit needs of cultivating tenants cannot be met then there is the question of security of tenure which is linked with the regulation of rents lands ceilings which have been already enacted should be enforced more honestly restrictions should be placed on the alienation of land belonging to the members of the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes holdings should be consolidated with a specified period of time but the real problem is not the definition of objectives but their achievement all the evidence suggest that tenants and small cultivators are subjected to almost unbearable pressures during the implementation of land reforms it has been the invariable experience that preparation of the records of rights leads to a wave of resistance